Hello again. Let's start the second session. And in this session, I'm going to use three different slides. And the first two are basically explaining the one and ten APIs. And again, we are going to have some practices on APIs in different applications, in different interlockings, and different technical themes. So I have two for the APIs, and the third one is the kind of simple explanation about the one and two protocol, and especially the protocol binding. Sure. So let's begin. So in this slide set, uh, I'm going to give you a brief introduction about the one m architecture, and we will not cover in the, all the details, but just the essentials. And then the CSFs, I'm going to explain what it is, CSF, really soon, and some core APIs, and unlike the core APIs, there are the other APIs, and as I say, those are the good to know APIs. So this is the only slide for the architecture, named Architecture 101 for 1M2M. So uh, there are two circles, and each circle represents the service provider domain. And just like your kind of mobile phone service provider, is this is the IoT service provider for your uh, IoT services, like the smart home, smart car, whatever the service. And there is another service provider. And just like the phone call or the mobile operate, mobile uh, network systems, uh, there would be some kind of core network servers, and they are interconnected with each other because uh, the user here with a device they want to kind of have a communication with the other domain's device, for example, and one of them has the kind of same speed. So circle means the service provider domain. Uh, each kind of blue box they represent the CSC, and in an easy word, they are the one M10 platforms. From the previous session, we have learned one M10 applications and platforms, and uh, from now on, we are going to kind of map them into CSC, which stands for the Common Services Entity. And please note that. From the previous session, we had learned the notion or the term like common services layer defined by 1MTM, and that's the layering concept. And when it comes to the logical entity for the uh, API or the protocol, we use entity. So CSC is the common services entity. Again, that's platform. And platform provides all the APIs, all the good features to applications. One of the applications, so CSC is the platform, and these are rounded kind of rectangles. Those are the AEs, and I think I just kind of forgot to mention the full name. And AE stands for application entity. So, easy word application, and the technical term in one of them they are AE application entity. And whenever the one of the applications uh, send some kind of request to someone, and someone could be the a CSC in the system, it could be this CSC or the other CSC because the one of the APIs are RESTful API, meaning the request will target a resource, and each resource. The resources are kind of hosted by the CSC. The platform has resources, and resources are kind of, kind of formed like the tree. And you can just imagine a file system for your Windows or the other operating systems, and they are all in tree shape. And the resources that applications or we can just say that we are trying to access. Uh, we will target a resource, and each resource represents some data or the function. So those are the kind of basic concept of one and two architecture and the communication. And let's assume that AE1 here, 
he wants to kind of access to a resource on the MSCC over here, then the request is not directly uh, generated and then sent from the A1 and to CSC1. Even um, he knows the IP address of this MNCSC, but that's not the one to him. And the request shall be sent to the registrar. Let me just kind of skip over what that is. Anyways, registrar in this case, MNCSC here on the right hand side. And then he will find the next kind of hub or next CSC to forward the request targeting to the kind of final target, in this case, this left hand side MNCSC. So there will be the forwarding like here and here, and then finally there. So that's what I meant by hub by hub communication. And registrar and registry. Let's say that this one is requesting a registration to this MNCSC, then the receiver of that registration request and who performs the registration by the request, that is registrar. And the entity who requests for the registration, that is registry. That's the kind of terminology definition in OM10. So I think this is good enough for you right now to understand the one and twin, the other technical you know, stops. And CSFs and core APIs. And where is the CSF? Yeah, sorry. Anyways, CSF stands for common services functions. And we've been talking about the other concept starting from CS like common services entity CSE common services layers and CSF means uh, common services functions and in this diagram the inner kind of boxes they are the common services function and the bigger box outside there is common services entity that means one of them platform which is CSC again CSC holds several common services functions and those functions are exposed to the other entities out there like the Oriental Notification Entity or MTC, there is no box which is that's just missing but by the specification there is another CSC so one CSC can provide something to the other CSC or ordinary kind of use cases providing some APIs in other words some kind of features or functions to the uh, one time applications and sometimes it is interacting with the network services entity this is not the network but network services entity like the switch pick the core network their kind of API server or something and there's a concept like the originator and receiver not the concept just a terminology so Whoever sent a request, we call it a originator. Whoever received the request, then we call it a receiver. And again, the request targets a resource, not 100% for all the cases in one and ten. But you, at the moment, you can kind of say that okay, that's the almost every cases. So normally, we send the request targeting a resource. That means most of the times the receiver will be the CSC and the exception which is when a request is not targeting a resource that's like the notification for example when and uh, there is a subscription setting setup and event occurs and the platform CSC in this case send a asynchronous notification to the application entity, for example, then we will send a notification, which is of course one of the one and ten requests, not targeting a resource, because uh, AE does not host a resource. Resources are hosted by the CSC. That's why CSC exposes APIs or provides APIs to the other entities. So that's the exception. So again, as a kind of quick wrap up. So the request targets a resource and resources are hosted by the CSC. So most of the cases, receivers are the CSC. In other words, platform. 
So ordinary case is AE is the originator and the CSC is the receiver. So the registration. So registration is the prerequisites for an entity who joins the one entity system and they want to do something after the registration. Something means like okay, I want to kind of get some data from the other entity, provide the data to ACSC somewhere in the system, or they want to kind of, uh, send some kind of final request to access multiple resources or the devices, in other words, something. Uh, when the registration is done, then this would be the registry and this is the registrar. And the thing is, uh, by the specification, we recommend uh, during the re registration, there shall be the authentication. So. Whenever there is the successful registration with the authentication and after that, whenever the registry sends some request firstly to the registrar, that's what I meant, uh, that's what I said in Architecture 101, then whatever the request comes into the system, then the registrar at the first hand, uh, he will kind of check the authenticity uh, and uh, with the verification for that, uh, if the target resource is not his resource, then he will forward the request. And the other kind of entities, like the other CSCs, whenever they get the forwarded request from this guy, for example, for this one, from this one, the request from this one, it will be kind of authentication okay because they had the registration before so uh, each entity in zero hope they have a registration relationship so once the request was kind of fired and reached here then all the forwarding messages will be forwarded so that's another kind of important aspect of the registration and uh, after the registration, the registry and the registrar, they share their information, like the context information. What is the kind of point of access, like the IP and port address, and the name, ID, and so on and so on. And those are kind of stored in the registration related resources. And we are going to see that in the next slide. And the other CSL which is really important and we're going to have a short kind of trial really soon today in the next session yeah uh, the discovery so discovering is one of them resource so we are not discovering the entity itself but we can discover the resource which represents the entity like the CSC or AE and we can discover the device, but not directly the device itself, but we are discovering device resources, resources representing devices. So everything is resource in the platform, in platforms, and we discover resources, and resource could be something defined in one and two. And there is the kind of parameters for the discovery, for the uh, filter conditions, and also the other stuff. And in this slide, I'd like to kind of talk about the scope of discovery. So when you, uh, when your discovery request hit something in the resource tree, again the resource tree is a logical representation, but the real implementation or physical kind of setting would be different for your implementation depending on your database and so on and so on. So logically, resources are kind of, you know, formed like this in a tree shape. And you are trying to find resources targeting, for example, humidity in the middle of the tree. That means the discovery target or the scope is all the descendant resources of this humidity resource. 
end is we will have some practice and there's the beta criteria in short FC and the other uh, parameter setting like okay discovery visual type parameter I want the address or the resource ID back in the hierarchical or in other words a structured resource identifier format anyways we will come back uh, okay sorry so here's the example so when we say hierarchical which is equivalent to the structured address or structured resource identifier this is a pass like ID kind of format just like our kind of uh, file pass for example in Windows we start from C or D like the root and then all the descendant kind of directory names and then the file name in the end just like that we 1mpm provides the structured resource identifier format like this home room humidity and then the day and as a shortcut, we also provide the kind of unstructured resource identifier. And it this is just an example, and it will be given by the platform. Whenever the platform creates a resource, and they are kind of one-to-one -one mapping. And the data management. So in most of the cases, what we are using is data storing and data sharing. Um, to the platform and among different applications and there is a resource type like the container and content instance and inside the container we have latest and oldest and for example uh, please look at the diagram over here and the CNT, LA, they are all short names for the container, content instance, and latest and oldest. LA means latest. And yeah, in one F10 protocol, we define all the short names for the resource type, and we define the enumerations in integer, and we have short names for the parameter, and so on and so on, to save some bytes over the air. And yeah, I think uh, we should be able to kind of come back to uh, talk more about the kind of data management, especially this container and content instance stuff. And just briefly, so container is the container, literally, it contains something, and something is the data, and we store data not only this one but typically into the content instance resources so this is the data and this is the data container and when you retrieve the latest virtual resource latest resource of the container because this is the virtual resource sorry this is the virtual resource and this is automatically accessible once you create this one so you don't create this one but it will be accessible when you create this one so when you retrieve a resource targeting this one then automatically the platform will fetch the lastly created content instance for example in this case CIF2 and return this one not the LA resource because there's no LA as a resource this is just a virtual kind of end and there are a lot of kind of meta informations uh, maintained by the platform. That's why we call this one as data management. If the max number of the instances, uh, the current number of instances hit the max number of instance set in this container, then the platform, uh, whenever it gets the successful uh, content instance creation request, then and it will create, it will delete the uh, all these content instance and create the new one. So that is a use case supported by one npm in terms of data management in the container and content instance resource type.